You see, I've always been of the opinion that if you find a Mac app that works for you, you should stick with it. And today I'm going to show you five that I could not do without. You'll notice that I don't do a huge number of app reviews on this channel. I'll try and do more, I promise. But the reason for that is because when I find an app that works, I rarely change. And in fact, the only time I do change is if the app becomes unsupported by the developer, gets hacked, is no longer relevant for what I'm doing, or it started dropping behind the competition. But those things are actually quite rare. So this list of apps is quite random, but they do all share a common trait, which is that they save me tons of time each week. The first app is SaneBox, who are sponsoring this video. And before this partnership, I knew of SaneBox, but I never really gave it second thought. And as it turns out, I was missing out. Now, if you're anything like me or everyone on the planet, you probably hate email management. And what SaneBox does is it sits between your email provider and your email client and basically organizes your email for you. And it does that via, yes, AI. I know we keep hearing about that, but this is an example where AI is incredibly useful. And SaneBox basically learns how you use your inbox and you can train it as well. So you can say to it, that person or that sender block forever and it will actually do so. Or you can say, put that person or that sender in this folder all of the time. But because of that AI, you don't have to actually do that. Since I started using SaneBox, I haven't done any of that kind of tuition for it. I've just let it do its thing and it really works. SaneBox gives you a bunch of predefined folders into which you can put emails and then it learns that you've done that and it does it for you in the future. But I just use two of them, the Sane Later and Sane News. Sane News, as you'd guess, contains all of the newsletters that I receive and Sane Later somehow automatically contains all of the emails that I don't want to get rid of. I do want to read or respond to at some stage, but I don't want cluttering my inbox. And they claim that you can save over two hours on average every single week by using SaneBox. They send you this like report thing each week, which tells you how many emails you received and basically how many hours you've saved not having to faff about with them. And last year, last year, last week rather, I saved two and a half hours. There's loads of other features as well. There's the brilliantly named Sane Black Hole, which you can just chuck people and other senders into and never hear from them ever again. There's a deep clean feature, there's a snooze feature, there's the ability to turn emails off completely for a period of time while you go away. And yes, you do get some of this functionality from other email clients. In my experience, it's never quite enough. It's never quite accurate enough. Whereas SaneBox, because of this AI, it works fantastically. And it also works with any email provider and any email client. If you want to save time managing your inbox, I would go and check out that link. I do not talk about Text Expander enough. It's really simple. It's such a simple concept. If you regularly type something out, whether it be your postal address, your email address, your telephone number, or even a sign off for an email. If it's the same each time, why on earth are you constantly retyping that stuff? I was guilty of this for years. I'd always manually type out my mailing address. Like I say, I'd have email templates in my head that I'd type out. With Text Expander, you put those common things, phrases, paragraphs, contact details in as snippets as they call them. And then you assign each snippet basically a keyboard shortcut. So for instance, if I type Z add on the keyboard, it automatically gives me my mailing address. And it may not sound like much, but if you think about how often you type out the same things every single week, if you add that time up and then completely reduce it to just a fraction of a second, the time saved is massive. And I've only mentioned the obvious stuff like your addresses and things like that. For example, I put my YouTube description template in there. So when I go into YouTube and upload these videos, rather than typing out the description each time, I basically type in Z YouTube and it fills out all of my links, all the calls to action, everything. And all I need to do is type in the description. That's it. I also use it for referencing my brand's hex colors. So if I need to bring up the orange that is part of Mark Ellis Reviews, I just type Z orange and there's the hex number. I don't have to go and fish it out from my notes. And the great thing about Text Expander is that you keep finding new ways to use it. So you'll be typing something out one day and you'll think Text Expander, pop it in, bosh, done to-do list managers or task managers, whatever you want to call them. There are so many out there. I've tried most of them. Todoist, Omnifocus, Things3, 
Apple reminders, they're all great, which makes this recommendation pretty tricky. But the reason it's in this list is because you may not have heard of TickTick. And to be fair, I wasn't aware of TickTick either until I heard MKBHD talk about it, and I'm in love with the guy, so I'll do pretty much anything he says within reason. I think the, the best thing about TickTick is that it sits somewhere in the middle between a very simple task manager and a really kind of dedicated GTD in-depth you know, life manager, like OmniFocus, for instance, or Notion. It's just this perfect mix of usability and just enough features to help you get everything done each day without confusing you. The other great thing about TickTick from my perspective is that it is cross-platform, which means I can use it on my Mac, my iPad, my Android device, Windows. I did make a video about TickTick, which I'll link to above, but it's really worth checking out. I've had a real on-off relationship with journaling over the years. I love the idea of journaling, but the actual process of doing it regularly and getting, you know, making it a habit has been pretty tricky. However, one app has completely changed that for me, and it's the one app, really, that keeps me coming back to journaling, and that app is Day One. Now, I don't know what it is about Day One. I wish I could sit here and say, it's that feature, that feature, and oh yeah, that feature, but I genuinely don't know. It's just got this, there's just something about Day One. It's got this kind of X factor, which is very rare in apps, but it is one of those apps that you just want to use. It's a beautifully designed app. It has won several, I think, of the Apple Design Awards. A bit like TickTick, it strikes that balance between usability and just enough customization. I've been using it for business planning as well, so I've created a separate journal where I can basically go in there and do my planning for 2023, or I can review 2022, etc. That worked really well over the festive period. If you're an Apple person, and if you appreciate beautiful apps that you just can't stop using, using, then day one is absolutely in that category. Just like to-do list apps, I've tried pretty much every writing app on the market. Scrivener, Bear, I've had to write them down. IA, I, I, can, I can never say that. IA Writer, Obsidian, Byword. The one that I am now completely obsessed with is Ulysses. I think it's the best distraction-free writing app out there personally. And actually, of all the apps on this list, if it was taken away from me, I'd be very, very upset. It's the only app I would absolutely have to take with me to a desert island. This is a sixth app on a five app list, so it's more of an honorable mention, really. But the reason this has made the grade is because, well, I think it's fantastic, but also it's a bit of a public service announcement. Now, I won't mention the app in question, but if you are currently worried, ironically, about the security of your password manager, my personal recommendation, there's loads of these, by the way, but this is my personal recommendation, is 1Password. One 1Password one has never been hacked. It's got a fantastic user interface, loads of features, it's cross-platform, it's never let me down, and it saves me a whole bunch of time every single day. However, I don't have my blinkers on completely with this, I promise. In a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to be comparing one password to another password manager, which is a bit cheaper, has a really interesting free version, and really caught my eye recently. So to keep things fair, I'm going to put one password up against that. That's happening in, like I say, about two weeks' time, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell not to miss that one. And if you're thirsty for more Mac app content, keep watching for a link to a video I made a little while ago, which I think you'll find very interesting.